time. It was getting late and he was waiting for you. In your parting moment with Baxter, you wait for a while, give him good night. We're gonna give him a kiss. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if you're new here. My name is Death by Pony. Today we're hopping back into our life. So without further ado, let's hop in. Uh, his voice dropped a fraction lower. That makes you something of a rebel too. A heartbeat passed. Then he broke the eye contact and moved away. Then his gaze returned to you. His usual affable smile returned with it. Speaking of your parents, who are they now? You didn't mention them visiting Sunset Bird. Uh, they're at home, most likely. I don't know for sure. Huh, that was odd to you. Why did Baxter come here during his semester off instead of going back to his family's home? I didn't want to stay with them or go back home to Oregon, in fact, at all. Uh, all at all, in fact. More rebellious behavior on my part, you see. His tone was a strange mixture of proud and uh, diffident. Like he, he knew how frivolous it sounded but had decided to own it anyway. No. Mother and father agreed to me vacation on my own, but under the condition that they would have the choice of where I stayed, California being fairly close by and Sunset Bird being so quaint, not to mention our prior excursion to the area, they concluded that it was the easiest way to keep me out of trouble. They had it all planned out, a safe summer holiday for their only child. You couldn't help but be surprised at that. He said a similar thing when you two first met, actually. That his parents had sent him here to keep it from being exciting. Sure, Sunset Bird was small and sleepy for the most part, but it was still California coast. A prism vista city was right there. Uh, what part of that was unexciting, especially since he had his own rental car? Maybe your parents should have thought this through a little more. Summer in SoCal is the worst they could have come up with. As you posed this question to him, Baxter's casual demeanor underwent a change. His customary relaxed smile took on a wickedly sharp edge. His eyes flashed with a devilish mischief. The change was so surprising that you couldn't help but imagine what his prim and proper parent would think if they were here to see it. He shifted closer conspiratorially and spoke in a hushed voice. So? Do you know what the legal age requirement for Renting a car is in the state of California. 18, why are you asking me? 21, 20. Uh, that's how old you are, right? Shrug. I have no idea. That's un uh, understandable. It's 21. I thought it was 25. He said it totally casually, almost without inflection. I, however, am 19. Oh, so he's not as old as I thought. It took only a moment for his words to register. Wait, Baxter was 19? The legal age for renting cars was... Oh, oh! You were rendered momentarily speechless. All this time, you had no idea Baxter carried on speaking, not noticing, or politely ignoring the implosion of your thought process was undergoing. The truth of the matter is that my parents, being uncreative people, had full confidence that I wouldn't be able to rent a car. That's why Sunset Bird was chosen as my destination. It's doable. But I don't have the same issue. There are ways around the age limitation, as you might have gathered. Since I'm over 18 and have control over my own bank accounts, I honestly don't know why they bother trying at this point. With everything you knew about him, you could maybe understand where his parents were coming from. Baxter was force of nature, giving him free reign willingly would be a tough pill to swallow. Uh, but after having raised him, you'd think they would have known by now that it wouldn't be as easy as that. So how did you manage it? You didn't want to hear now how. How did you manage it? It wasn't at all difficult, honestly. I didn't have to do anything awful. Don't worry. I have a large number of social connections myself. Members of dance circuit, acquaintances from the country club, fellow students from college, miscellaneous family friends. The list goes on. The point is I'm fortunate enough to have a connection in the area who had an extra car, which was mine to use provided I covered the cost plus a little extra, of course. The throwaway nature of that last part gave you pause, Baxter's idea of little would probably put Cliff Holden $20 to shame. Okay, that's good to know, I guess. Splendid, glad that squared away. He gave you a... Uh, Sasharine smile, all honey. Uh, and that, for now, was that. You passed the rest of the meal with idle chatter, exchanging 
Candy codes and silly stories, everything was easier with some good food at hand. Eventually, dinner ended and dishes were cleared and the bill sent for. One of the things you discussed was who'd pay. Uh, you paid for yours, he paid for his, it was the fairest way. Uh, it would be split it right in half, team effort. You'd paid for his and he paid for yours. It was a little more fun that way. You'd be willing to cover it and you would accept his generosity. It would be nice. Insisted on paying the whole bill. It was going to be your treat. Right in half. Team effort. And now he reached over to place his hand on the wrapped up souvenir and sat patiently next to his plate the whole meal. Exciting. I've been eagerly awaiting the opportunity to open this. No time like the present. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I want to see what you think. And you will. He pulled the gift squarely in front of him and with a great deal of ceremony as though it were beauty wrapped present an enormous bow with the top he was it was generous of him to play pretend there was certainly nothing fancy about the cheap plastic bag but thank you for shopping printed all down the sides he closed his eyes and with tentative fingers reached inside and pulled out the souvenir you'd bought when he lifted his lids and finally saw it for the first time his brows raised in appreciation he turned the necklace over in his hands appraising it from multiple angles uh, as the warm dusk glow bathed in gold. Then he ran the stone gently through his fingers, admiring the way it sparkled in the light. It's beautiful and my favorite colors, too. He grinned at you. I'll be sure to get lots of use out of it. And, ooh, and I'll have a place of honor in my closet. It's a wonderful gift. I couldn't have chosen better myself. Having a drop of bright California sunshine to brighten up my college dorm is the very thing i need so charming i'm reminded of you every time i look at it thank you james you're welcome i knew you'd like it i'm glad that good i'm that good baxter chuckled and you were happy to see it for all your big talk it was a relief to know that baxter appreciated the souvenir you'd picked out he generally placed the necklace into the bag for safekeeping i'll be distraught if anything happens to it once the bill came and went baxter cleared his throat and made to stand shall we you checked around for your belongings and nodded. Yeah, let's go home. Wonderful. You headed through the club and out into the parking lot. Night was beginning to fall in earnest. As you settled into the car, you found yourself gazing back at the cypress. In your head, you'd thanked it for many years of fine fool food and happy memories. It had been a good day, a lifetime of good days. And because of Baxter, it had offered you even more to be grateful for. That meeting was a gift to you from an old friend. Uh, the last of the daylight was long gone by the time you finally returned to your neighborhood. Baxter had gone more slowly than when you'd left, content to enjoy the drive, almost as if he was trying to delay the end of your sightseeing trip for a little while longer. You felt the same. It had been a special day in many ways. You sighed for alone, and the car pulled onto your street at last. Baxter parked and killed the engine. Then he shifted in the driver's seat, his hands still on the wheel to face you. I really appreciate your company today, James. I have to confess, I have an itinerary planned in the event you declined my invitation. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't want you to feel obligated to humor me, so I'm not lonely. I managed perfectly well. But in the end, I'm grateful it didn't come to that. I was indefinitely preferable having the chance to spend a few hours in your Thank company. You. I don't know if you feel the same or if you it did indeed tag along as a favor to me. Either way, thank you. Baxter finished his brief speech and released the wheel. He made as if to get out of the car without waiting for a response. Happy to do it. Wanted to spend some time with you. I'm glad you invited me. I appreciate the chance to get to know you. Patted his arm reassuringly. Uh, I wanted to spend more time with you. He glanced back, his eyes bright. Baxter was awfully pleased, making no attempts to hide that fact. He realized that he'd really been asking you a question in his own roundabout way. He was hoping you'd enjoyed his being there too. It was nice that you could make him happy with such a simple thing. Uh, Baxter cleared his throat and shifted in place. He pretended to, uh, his pretend escape plan hadn't included taking off his seatbelt. He undid it then. You moved to the same, and the two, you moved to do the same, and the two of you got out of the car into the warm night air. Goodbye was on the tip of your tongue when Baxter's voice gave you a pause. James, you turned to where Baxter stood. Baxter was leaning casually against the hood, one hand in his pocket. Forgive and me. Pocket. Forgive me, it's been a long day, and I'm sure you're tired of questions at this point. If you indulge me a while longer, I did have something else in mind to ask. Uh, that didn't bother you. You simply smiled to show that. If anything, you'd been the one asking most of the questions. Go ahead. On the corner of Baxter's mouth lifted a crooked half-smile. He stood up properly and continued, Thanks. Well, as I must repeat, today has been 
particularly lovely. All the love here for having spent the time with you. And I wonder, would it be too forward of me to consider our time together a date? A beat. You blinked. Wait, a date? Your voice came out a bit squeaky in surprise. Not for the first time today, Boxer had managed to catch you completely off guard. It wasn't lost on him either. But whereas before Baxter might have delighted in getting such a reaction out of you, the expression he gave now was gentle, friendlier. A funny considering the entire more than friendliness of the subject. He ran a hand absent mindedly through his hair, searching for the most delicate way to put his bluntness. I have I read the signals wrong. I wasn't the underlying intention. It wasn't the underlying intention when I asked. I assure you, I got the impression of what this may be or could be part way through and if i'm not entirely off i'd be far more curious to inquire on whether i might consider any further out going see other dates as well he edged to closer to in. the chase i'm asking I've... you out <laughs> that's it if you'd like to spend more time with me and assume you'd even want to date a man that was absolutely a date and we should absolutely have another i don't treat things that lightly why would you want to date me i don't understand we barely know each other i could date a guy i guess you're comfortable with me absolutely date we should absolutely In have another case. then i before i get too carried away in excitement i must on the fact that this is not a grand romantic overture i doubt you would believe me if i was claiming to be your one and only for all time he placed a palm on his chest and your gaze with a crooked smile I'm nominating myself as suitor for the season, a charming summer adventure. No more, no less. So fling basically. Only you would describe it like that. You pondered the strange situation. You can only stare with your mouth hanging open. Only you would describe it like that. <laughs> Baxter laughed, self-effacing, and shrugged. He wasn't about to argue with you about that, but he did make one more attempt to get the idea across. I don't care about what label you choose to put on this arrangement. I could be your boyfriend or nothing at all. And you can also change your mind without consequence if you find it's not what you imagine further down the line. If that's how you feel, I feel I can live with it. it makes sense. Yeah, I get it. Already, consider yourself suited. I'm sorry, I can't do that after all. If that's how you feel, I can live with it. At your words, he beamed at you, his face bright in the Lovely. darkness. Thank you. You've already given me so much of my time here. I've been very fortunate to have you as my neighbor, and for now, it's something else. His tone was measured and polite as ever, but you couldn't help but hear an excited edge in the words, as if he were internally bouncing on the balls of his feet with anticipation because he wouldn't do it on the outside. The smile of Baxter was your favorite. Seeing it, you were already glad to have accepted his offer. Top your own personal feelings. It was cute to have such an impact on him. Underneath his peculiarities, Baxter was a sweetheart. But once the initial rush had died down, you thought Strifford more practical matters. What would you say to people? What would you call this thing between you? You put the question to Baxter, whose eyes lifted along the edges. Would you care if I told my family or no? My friends are going to find out. Sure, though. What a delightful first concern. It's up to you how we go about it. If it's not something you feel comfortable talking about, then I wouldn't insist. But my preference would be not to treat it as a secret, however. I'm proud to be doing this. But again, I'm a visitor, and this is your home. The choice is ultimately yours. You're okay with it? I don't mind telling people. I don't mind telling if you're honest about it. Uh, we can tell people. It's cool. I'd rather not tell my moms and sister. I'll be teased. If you're okay with that, I don't mind telling people. I don't mind if you're honest about it. I don't mind telling people. Excellent. I'll speak casually about it then. My parents are likely to hear the news eventually, so I don't expect you to speak to them. Oh, all right. Now, as much as it pains me to say, I shouldn't keep you any I'm longer. I'm here if you need me. Thank you again for a wonderful day, James. If you ever want another, you can call or text me. I'm very able to drop whatever I'm doing and come see you. Or alternatively, you're welcome to come by my place whenever it strikes you. I'll be in touch too, though, so don't feel too pressured to initiate. He lifted his hands. A tree wave staying put in order to see you head home. Good night. Have a good night. At this, uh, the closing moments of your day together, it struck you how much of an impact he had on you in such a short time. You cast your mind back further to five years ago. It was still so surreal to think about the mysterious boy who had vanished by the trace once the night was over. Not only had he shown up after all this time, but he'd moved into the neighborhood and we now you were dating. Uh, the absurdity made your head spin. Your chest ached with profound emotions that you didn't have a name for like you were seeing the beauty and complexity of the universe laid bare but you could mull over those thoughts another time it was getting late and he 
was waiting for you. In your parting moment with Baxter, you wait for a while, give him a good night. We're gonna give him a kiss. Baxter was initially frozen by your initiative. You outspaced him, but not for long. He quickly leaned in to return the kiss. He rested his hands on your shoulder as he lifted his face stretched up to meet you. It was the kind of adorable. His lips parted, soft again. Yours, the kiss was chest tender. Your eyes were shut, but you could feel his mouth curl upwards with contentment. You opened them again, and there was his face as dazzling as the stars. Being with him that way was warm and comforting, despite the fact that his shirt felt really stiff fashion over comfort with that. You're forward. very good. I must say, I didn't anticipate you'd be the one to pull a move on me so soon and daring move at that, but it is far from unwelcome. He laughed and quite... He laughed quietly behind his hand. There was no chance of you making Baxter shy, but there was definitely a coyness uh, to his uh, temperament and a faint flush to his cheeks. Well then, at risk of sounding like a broken record, have a good night, James. Good night, Baxter. You let each other go, at least for the moment. Baxter had begun the farewell, yet made no move to leave. He watched you cross the road to your house and turned on the threshold as you waved one last time. Look at this man blush! We kissed him! <laughs> the familiar grin was the last thing you saw before the door closed behind you. You'd see it soon enough. That was strange feeling to be back home after such an eventful afternoon. So much had happened in the space of a few short hours. So much had changed. Of course, you were right then. You couldn't describe as without excitement you were greeted almost immediately by footsteps approaching from the hallway. Sweetie, you're back. I heard the door open. Mom's laugh rang out from behind her out of the pain pan and into the fire. No, no, no. Well, there, there's no need to jump on James without giving him a chance to take his shoes off. For all we know, it's been a very informative and tiring day. <laughs> Ma came in front of you and Mom appeared over her shoulder and you could see a smirk on Mom's face to go along with the pointed implications of her choice words. For all that, Mom appeared to be... Uh, tempering Ma's enthusiasm. They were both guiltily speculating what you were up to all day, and now was their chance to finally find out. While her wife uh, rested a hand on her shoulder, Ma beamed angelically the picture of innocence. She was the last person to bowl someone over the minute they got home. Huh? Honest. What's going on exactly? Your sister's voice drifted up from the couch. Liz had been sitting watching TV, but spun around to see where the commotion w was about. Her show forgotten. The gang was all there in only a matter of seconds. So how did you go? Did you have a nice time with our new neighbor? Oh, so that's where you've been all afternoon. Out with a gentleman collar. How charming. Your sister leaned over the back of the couch with a binding grin on her face. She could have given back to a run for his mm -hmm. money. Yes, James was getting to know Mr. Ward. The rest of us would like to know him as well. Well, you're such a snoop. Uh, you laughed. Calm down, Mo. I'll get to it. He, Baxter, asked me out on a date. I had a lot of fun. You wanted the scoop? On Baxter, I got deep. Do simply side and shake your head. He, Baxter, asked you out on a date. You couldn't contain any longer. The words gushed out of your mouth in a confused torrent. There was dead silence for a moment. Your family merely stared at you. They opened their mouths in unison. What? Calm down, everybody. Not that you could blame them. You did your best to elaborate over the top of the three of them talking at once. The slightly longer version is that when we drove home, Baxter asked if he could consider today a date. And if so, could we have more? Obviously, I was down for both things. So I said, yes, voila, we're dating. Liz managed to recover her senses a little after your explanation. After shock gave way to something else, something more twisted, she grinned wickedly, and her eyes flashed with amusement. Look at that stare. It's something you would only get from a sibling. And they're just like, wait, that escalated. <laughs> well, that has to be a record, at least on this street. Someone give that man an award. <laughs> I love this. She said it with relish giggling to boot. She was enjoying this too much to let you live down in a hurry. Being with me is his reward. Thank you very much. Across from you, Mom snorted with sudden laughter. I see. Well, at least we know one thing for sure about our new neighbor. He doesn't waste any time. She judged him accurately. That was exactly how you described Baxter. A hurricane couldn't have swept you off your feet so fast as that. 
Next year, Ma continued to blink stunned silence of your parents. Ma was usually the one to encourage you to be social and make new connections with people. She basically shoved you out the door to go find out more about this guy. The idea that you might be getting get this involved with Baxter hadn't even crossed her mind. Perhaps sending Ma's hesitance list chimed back up. Teasing aside, congrats, little brother. It's not all on him, you know, how to charm a guy, and he's lucky to have you. Well said, Liz. Baxter knows quality when he sees it. Now hopefully his properness isn't actually just an act. Uh, you take care and be safe, kiddo. I hope you have a safe summer. Well. Fun summer. And if not, we can always make sure he never sits foot in this state ever again. This finally was, this finally was what jolted Ma out of her state of shock. She babbed her wife playfully on the arm in rebuke. Pam. Pam, what did we agree about that kind of shove talk? We shouldn't resort to threats, especially not about someone James cares for. She smiled sweetly, recovering her buoyant energy somewhat. And don't have to. Regardless if Baxter did anything wrong, his new relationship, you have the guilt would eat him alive, I'm sure. Mom gave another hearty laugh and put an arm around Ma. The two were peas in a pod, the pair of them. Ma faced you fully, apparently more tense now that the ice had been broken. Isn't that great? I agree, sweetheart. Baxter is fortunate to have the chance to get to know you. Make the most of it, all right? And being able to see you happy is good enough for us. Thanks, everyone. I'm already happy. At least now you guys know. I smile appreciately. You shrugged nonchalant. You covered your face with embarrassment. So mushy. Okay, at least of you course. know. Thanks for telling us, sweetheart. We're glad you felt able to. In spite of the inevitable ribbing, it felt good to have opened up about that. In their own ways, they all wanted you to know that they were on your side no matter what choice you made. As the night wore on, you and Mom and Liz ended up chatting amongst themselves and grossed in conversation to the point where you were able to slip away unnoticed. On the way upstairs to your room, you found yourself glancing back at the front door as to catch another glimpse of Baxter over the street. You really hoped he'd gotten what he got what he wanted out of the sight he saw. Sunset Bird was a special place to you. If you were lucky, then maybe Baxter had come to realize that as well. You'd certainly reached more of an understanding of him uh, one way or another. Yet you were positive there was much still buried underneath the surface, so much more into his character than there had appeared to be at first glance. But you didn't mind. You know each other for such a small part of your lives. Of course, a single outing wouldn't be enough to quantify an entire person. Uh, what was special was it might not always be that way. Currently, he was... It, Currently, he was the bowling alley shiny and new, but someday you might be as familiar with Baxter as you were the shopping street and the cypress. Uh, this day was just one more wonderful step in that direction. <laughs> oh my god. Firstly, this man asked us to go out, and then it became a date. Then we said yes, and then we kissed him. Bold. I had fun. I, I'm blushing a little. I'm excited. But I have like 15 minutes and then I have to go to work. So I'll see y'all next time. I hope you enjoyed this because I did. And all I know is I'm going to be smiling for hours like an idiot because video games. <laughs>